Uh, hello, and welcome back to Dungeons and Dramatics, the show where I, Zephyr's voice, hit his hand very hard on the table. The show where I, Zephyr's voice, attempt to aid you in your performance as the DM, or a player, probably a DM, by giving you pointers on how some of the more monstrous creatures in Dungeons and Dragons should be performed. <laughs> this is the first video of a few that I'm going to be doing on hags, and we will be starting with one that is often overlooked, I think, the green hag, CR3, so she can be quite easily kind of looked past if your character's level too quickly or she doesn't fit into the campaign. That being said, there's a lot of good stuff here, so, so let me hit you with a tiny pinch of lore and then we'll dive straight into the performance stuff. Here we go. Green hags inhabit dismal forests, swamps and moors. The green hag's body, whether broad, narrow, fat or thin, is topped with a tangled mane of hair. A green hag thrives on creating despair and tragedy in the lives of her victims, using her skill with illusion magic to help in this goal. Destroying the hopes of others brings her unbridled joy. So before we begin, we need a name for our hag, a horrible, miserable, monstrous creature. Let's have a look in Volo's Guide to Monsters, see what name's gonna fit our hag the best. I'm a absolute for alliteration. Um, I probably shouldn't say that. I'm a big fan of alliteration. Dismal Polly Pigtooth. Dismal Polly Pigtooth, yeah. Okay, I like that. Polly Pigtooth is our hag. So, we will begin for Polly with vocal characteristics. Where in our register are we going to be performing her from? What accent might we give her? Just some really bare bone fundamentals for her so that when we build on with the flavor and the context, there's no confusion as to where we're grounded because we know everything's laid out in front of us. It's like making notes before you write an essay. So I think she's not going to be Welsh fully because I can't really do a good Welsh accent, but she's going to be like Welsh 50-50, <laughs> like multinational Welsh. Uh, because I'm a huge witcher nut, so she's going to be a little bit crone-esque, but not quite as horrific and predatory as them. She's going to be a little bit less so. That's because uh, hags in general, but mostly green hags, tend to be more about illusion and uh, lying and manipulation rather than upfront murderous, you know, like scratching people with their claws. So definitely a little bit uncanny valley with her not overtly threatening, but still threatening voice, if that makes sense. So... Somewhere around here in my throat, I think. Lots of rolling of the R's and drawing things out. Making some strange gaps between words for old Polly Pigtooth. They call me dismal, but I'm always smiling, really. <laughs> See, that's nice. So the register isn't anything that's too hard to get to. It's not much higher than mine. It's not much lower than mine. That's because hags, they've got a pretty normal sized body. They're bigger than most creatures, I think, or smaller, depending on the way you want to go. They're quite flexible. But the vocal tract, if you examine their throat, it's probably going to sound something like a human. So don't stress too much like I did with the beholders, making it nice and freaky. It doesn't have to get that weird. You know, we're not in outer space here. Okay, so... Like I said, pretty classic Witcher 3 crone, so please forgive me. But don't let the classics dissuade you. They're classics for a reason, right? So we're going to use that to our strength. So let's take those bare bones that we've built up and let's stick some fat on them, so to speak, with some vocal flavor. My favorite section, I think probably everyone's favorite section if you're being honest. Now, we want to ask ourselves, what do we want to achieve with these noises? Yeah, we want to achieve uh, enhancement of the performance. We probably want to weird out the company uh, as much as possible. But I think something specific, like I mentioned before about the illusions and the manipulation, Polly needs to keep a general friendliness about her. That's her whole shtick, right? She's not there to kill like maybe an anise hag would be. She's there to trick and subvert and plot. And so the noises should be weird. Definitely like, oh, this is kind of scary. But they shouldn't be like horrific growling and guttural, like um, animalistic noises. I think more perverse than predatory. Yeah, I think that's the best way of putting it. So I'm going to stick just a little bit of snorting in because snorting is just the go-to noise for me. It's so easy to put in between words. Uh, I'm actually going to play with some tongue clicking because I think that'll be so horrible and uncomfortable if you've, especially if you've watched, um, what is that film called? I can't remember the name of the film right now. It'll come to me, but you know, like, that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, PTSD for anyone who's watched that, because I still get it. Uh, and then the rolling tongue. I think 
that just, once again, Witcher 3, listen, I'm not original, no one is, okay? Cut me some slack. <sighs> Welcome to my swamp. Handsome you are. You come with presents for old Polly Pigtooth. Oh, how generous you are. Very generous, you must be looking for something in return. <laughs> Yeah, I'm enjoying this. Some super weird sh Um, ah, sorry. You know what? I'm never gonna stop swearing, so I'm just gonna keep bleeping it. I'm not gonna start up, keep apologizing for it. She's properly weird, but she's not quite terrifying, and that's the perfect place we want to put her, like a mannequin, you know? But a mannequin tends to look fucking terrifying, but a mannequin that's even, you know... This is an awful metaphor. Cut this out, Theo. The perfect amount of perversion, and just minimal amounts of predator. Um, not that not that predator, even though I can't do that voice for the life of me. No, like, um, more vulture than lion. There we go. Thanks. Finally, a metaphor comes to me. So, let me hit you with some vocal context for the last section for old Polly. Now, vocal context has meant a couple of things in the last few videos, but I think I've settled on it now. Why does she speak the way she does? What's her body language gonna look like when she says things, when you're performing her? Well, these are the things that are gonna tie our character together because I think Polly's pretty well set up now. But if we're talking about really enhancing your game presence and enhancing the experience of your players, you've gotta enable yourself to channel Polly. And channeling Polly is always going to be best when you have reasons for the way she performs. So, like, literally down to the minutia, like, why is she clicking her tongue? Is she just being weird? That's a totally okay excuse. She's just being weird. Maybe she's doing it deliberately to make people upset. Maybe when she's talking by herself, she doesn't. Maybe this is all a performance for her to make herself seem more mysterious, make her seem more intimidating so she can get what she likes. These are all things we can go for. But for my Polly, I think I'm just going to make it that she's got, like this horribly long tongue and sometimes when she talks it kind of unspools and she has to kind of click it back into place because I think that is oh just disgusting and perfect for a hag really perfect hag vibes so I've put down some uh, jotted notes here for the vocal context we've got caressing hands some nice kind of calming mothering noises despite the weirdness so you've got to enable that friendliness to shine through despite all the creepiness which is such a delicate balancing act but hags that's inherent to them you know especially when you're talking about a, a sorrow breeding weird kind of I get joy from people being upset green hag so you've got to have that weird kind of mothering tone and constant smiles because nothing is going to upset someone more than someone being apparently excited statically happy because of their suffering. So, let's have a look. I f***ing love this character. <laughs> okay. What are you after, my love? Come into the swamp all this way, just to ask for something. You must be desperate. Well, let's see what old Polly Pigtooth can do for you, my love. <laughs> I can help you. Not for free, but for a price. Nothing too much, darling. Nothing, no. Just enough. Just enough for old Polly. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with that one. Polly is going to be used in my campaign. Now, look, that is the bare bones, the flesh, and the skin, and arguably the clothing. You know, we don't, we want to keep it PG, um, of an entire character, an entire green hag. Pretty bare bones, but you can grab that, you can use that, and use all of your creative license with it. It's just, for the performance, there it is. You don't need to overcomplicate it. Everything you need to know is right there. Yeah, this series is definitely more for the people who struggle with the performance side of things because I certainly did. I don't anymore. And I have found that investigating the performance of characters really allows me to get the writing that I do for them out in a far more um, clean and prescient way. And so I just want to spread that to as many people as I can. So if this helped you even slightly, Thanks a lot. This is, like I said, the first in a couple of videos on hags. Didn't want to put them all together because look, it took like 10 minutes to do one hag and we've got like, what, six now? Uh, and with the, the release of the Wild Beyond the Witch, like we've got like eight. So uh, <laughs> maybe we'll do some more in between hags. Um, but for now, hey, thanks a lot for listening to my rambling and my poly. Next, I think we'll probably cover the night hag, my favorite hag. 
Until then, my name's Theo, or Zephyr's Voice, and this has been Dungeons & Dramatics. It's been a damn pleasure, and I'll see you next time.